Hello, and welcome to the virtual Scandinavia House and today's book talk, The Mask is Atlantis, Selected Poems, featuring the author Maria Silkeberg, translator Kelsey Venda, graphic designer Bernard Wosteinrich, and Wosteinrich. moderated by David Rothenberg. In today's event, Silkeberg, Vanda, and Wostenreich will read and read from and discuss the writings, translations, and publications with images from the book, uh, which has been called beautifully breathtaking, uh, threatening, cruel as only love can be. Uh, Damascus Atlantis was published by Terra Nova Press uh, and was long listed in for the 2022 Pen Award for Poetry and Translation. This talk is being recorded and will be made available on our website, scandinavias.org, as well as our YouTube page. Feel free to ask questions in the chat section and we'll get to get to them towards the end of the program. I will also put a link to where one can purchase the book in that chat box. Maria Silkeberg is a poet, translator, and poetry filmmaker living in Stockholm. Uh, since her first book appeared in, in the 1990s, uh, she has written nine collections of poetry, including 2323 in 2006, Material in 2010, and with Gainath Am Amahud uh, Till Damascus in 2014. Her two most recent books are Atlantis in 2017 and Revolution House in 2021. She has also translated several books uh, by the Danish poet Inga Christensen and the American poet Susan Howe, Rosemary Waldrop, Claudia Rankin, and Anne Boyer. Chelsea Vanda is the, a poet and translator from the Spanish and Swedish. Her book length translations include Damascus Atlantis, selected poems by Maria Sokolberg, as well as In Muteness by Sergio Espinoza, uh, published by Valise Books in 2020, and The Algebra Age by Berta Garcia Fayette. Uh, by Songbird Press in 2018. She has published Rare Earth, a chapbook of original poems in 2020 by Fishing Line Press, and she won the 2018 American Scandinavian Foundation Nadia Christensen Translation Prize for her poems for uh, Atlantis. She is also the program manager for the American Literary Translation Association, ALTA. Bernard Worsten Heinrich, is a professional graphic designer with more than 25 years experience. As an artist and trained craftsman, he focuses on bringing the client's vision to life through intuition, understanding, and technical ex expertise. And moderating today um, is the musician and philosopher David Rothenberg, who has written the book Why Birds Sing, Bug Music, uh, Survival of the Beautiful, and many other books, he is, which has been published in over 11 languages. He, he has more than 30 recordings out, including One Dark Night, I Left My Silent House, which came out on ECM Records, and most recently in the wake of Memories and Faultness. He is also a distinguished professor at the New Jersey Institute of Technology is, and is the founder and publisher of Terra Nova Press. First off, we'll start with David to tell the origins of the book, and which will be followed by readings in both Swedish and English. Please welcome David. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Thanks for inviting all of us. And, uh, you know, thanks so much, Maria, for writing this and, and Kelsey translating, Bernhard designing it. And, and I am so happy to be hosting this event. And, uh, you know, among the different things that I've done, one thing I did is to start this publishing company, Terra Nova Press. And the reason I did that was I just found a lot of people I know were writing these cool books and nobody wanted to put them out. And I also thought in general, the publication printing quality of so many books was going down the tubes, especially from big famous publishers like Knopf and Ferrar Strasheru, worse and worse paper, cheaper, cheaper bindings, you know. Why? I said, I could do better. I, I could figure out how to print nicer books. And I was, I was always looking for projects that nobody else I thought could do or would do in the way they should be done. And I was staying with my friend in Oslo, Bjarne Kvinsland, who's a composer and music promoter. And his daughter, Ronvai Kvinsland, was studying uh, Nordic literature in Copenhagen. And I asked her what she was doing. She said she was writing a paper on this wonderful poet, Maria Silkeberg, from Sweden, from Göteborg originally. And she started saying, you know, a lot of these things were already translated in English. They're floating around online. It's this great translator, Kelsey Bonada. And Maria also made poetry films. And there were like these films you could see. And I started to think, okay, here's a, a book that no other published poetry press would want to do. Something with color illustrations and poems translated from Sweden, Swedish about uh, the world, what's going on in the world today. 
in the inner world, the outer world. Damascus Atlantis, I thought it should combine her two recent books in a kind of new special edition. And uh, I wasn't sure if Maria would go for this, but I asked her, she said, hmm, that sounds plausible. Like, uh, let's talk about it. And so then when I thought about who could design it, of course, I went to my good friend, Bernhard Wustheinrich, with whom I played a lot of music for many years and collaborated on the design of CD packages and things. I said, this is the perfect book for Bernhard to design. He would know how to connect images and text. So it was a kind of synergistic mix of different people who first did not know each other. And they came together to make this beautiful book. I'm so happy to be talking about it today with all of you. I'm, I'm so happy it was nominated for this prestigious prize. You know, yes. Congratulations, Marie and Kelsey. And now I think we're going to read a bit from it and then we'll talk some more about how it came to be. So turn it over to Kelsey and Maria. Sure. Uh... I'm so happy to be here. Kelsey, I will start reading in Swedish when you follow me. Våldsamma förstoringar vidgad pupil. Somna i några mikrosekunder. Som om hjärnan släcktes i långa engelska meningar. För första gången, den första handen, synen, trängseln vid civilisationens lås. Att sova i hålen under husen, hålla sig rörlig. You know all this. No, I don't know. Det är lilla hålet där den går in. Utgången där den sliter sönder skallen. Den pekande handen, kroppen på andra sidan gatan. En grå hög. Om man springer i zigzag, kanske. Rörelsen, one of a kind, one kind. Det snöar nu. Stora snöflingor i varje ton hennes röst. Inte djurets, inte gatans, glaskärvorna, vakenheten i natten, hans natt. Att allt blandas i fiktion, verklighet, i minnet av massaken. Vad som hände, vem som var ansvarig, glömskan, förträngningen, förnekelsen, spectral analysis as spectral analysis, jämförelseobjekt. To do justice, jag vet inte, jag vet inte. The art of making one word speak several times. Bloody culture, isn't it? Violent blow up, dilated pupil, fall asleep in a few microseconds as if the brain switched off in long English sentences for the first time the first hand, sight, crowding images at civilization's lock, to sleep in the holes beneath the buildings, keep moving. You know all this. No, I don't know. The little hole where it enters, the exit point where it sunders the skull, the pointing hand, the body across the street, a gray heap. If you run zigzag, maybe the movement, one of a kind, one kind. It's snowing, big flakes in each note. Her voice, not the animals, not the streets. Shards of glass, wakefulness in the night. His night, that everything blends together in fiction, reality, in the memory of the massacre. What happened? Who was responsible? Oblivion, repression, denial, spectral analysis as spectral analysis, objects of comparison to do justice. I don't know. I don't know. The art of making one word speak several times. Bloody cultural, isn't it? En kvinna i ljust röd klänning står mitt i gatan med en banderoll. Alldeles ensam. Stopp the killing. Svänger hon tyget bland bilarna. Regn på gatorna. Fukt i luften. En ledans svärta. Inte humorns kvickhet. Kvicksilverrörelse snabbt stigande. 30 fredsobservatörer, 18 döda. En dag. Under en dag under vapenvilan. 
såg vapnet tränga genom stålet, den lufttomma triangeln, gasen som utvecklades, den roterande kulan, hur den tog sig igenom det decimetertjocka stålet, pansaret, pansarvagnen, det virvlar, virvlar i aprilnatten, de odöda kring hjärtat, ålen. Filmen säger hon flera gånger, den rörliga bilden, ett svart lackerat blänkande membran, långa tystnader, misslurar, fusioner. There is no repeat, ahead is only språkets tystnad och skada, tabu, vakuum, gästernas språk, gästernas, that will pierce the skin, den tomma blicken, övervakningsutrustning, money will blood. De systematiska våldtäkterna, 60 000 siffror, inte namn. A woman in a bright red dress stands in the middle of the street with a banner. All alone, stop the killing. She waves the fabric between the cars, rain in the streets, muggy air, the dark of weariness. Not humor's agility, it's quicksilver movements rising rapidly. 30 peace observers, 18 dead, one day, in one day, during the truce. Watch the weapon penetrate steel, the airless triangle, the gas expanding, the rotating bullet, how it pierced the decimeter thick steel, armor plating, the armored tank whirling, whirling in the April night, the undead around the heart, the torso, the film, she says over and over, the moving image, a black lacquered glittering membrane, long silences, foghorns, fusions, there is no repeat, ahead is only, languages silence and injury, taboo, vacuum, the gestures, language, the guests, which will pierce the skin, the blank look, surveillance equipment, money with blood, systemic rape, 60,000 numbers, not names. Mm. Thank you both for that. So, in the original, there are some passages in English already. What happens when it all goes into English? Was there any ever a question that maybe those passages should go into another language? Or what was it? A, how, how did you decide to distinguish this? We actually tried a lot of things before. We tried Spanish. And I think we tried also to, you know, using italics in the printed version. And finally, we decided just to let it be English. It was, a, I, I really think it was the best choice. I, I imagine when reading it first in the Swedish version, when, when it leapt into English, I imagine people were speaking English when you were thinking about this, but maybe that's just something I thought. Maybe you were just hearing some phrases in English as you wrote it. How, how did the English come in the original for you? And you know, I have been using English in my poetry for quite a while. And it's like, it's so hard to explain this to Americans, especially because we, uh, you, you don't, you cannot live one day in Sweden without using in the English language. You, you hear it, you use it, you say, it's like, it's everywhere. So for me, I have to use it in poetry because to make sense of the language we use, it's, it's really, but there, there, there are like conservative waves where we, people think you should not use it just because of this reason, but for me, it's the opposite. And I also have like friends where I really speak English, with, which is not originally English speakers, but it is like a communication language for all of us all over the world, I think. And that's also somehow these phrases are not always perfect English. And that was a problem I know for Kelsey, what to do with them. When you were talking about spectral analysis, what kind of spectral analysis were you thinking? Um, 
it's like in, uh, uh, a lot like these poems they, they are like a lot of like dealing with ghosts i think the ghost of like the memories the the ghost in europe the ghost like and uh, how to like uh, also make them visible that was mostly that but it's of course it's you can use that analysis in many senses so yeah so you you were thinking like of specters and analyze like ghost analysis in a way mostly yeah, yeah. But, no, also, but you can also think of it as like a sound sounds like the ghosts of sounds mm -hmm, yeah interesting and, and so in the while when, when you were working on these poems originally you also made films that connected to this material you know and, and then but the book turns the films into still images yeah. how does it change when the poetry films become like poetry stills that is like it's it's really very very special to make them stills because the movement and also especially the speed in uh, the poetry films is really important because they are trying to grasp something like present yeah things happening in the present and you and it's too fast for you to grasp it and you try to do something with this sensation and then you make stills from the film and you really try to make a freeze from like the almost like recent past and that and from mostly like in the images in the this translation it is from a film which is like from demolitions of buildings falling down so it's like to capture the moment before they uh, like crash or like in the moment like it's very uh, but i think you know this books where you flip a book and you see a movement like a horse mm -hmm. and this you this like because there is some kind of destruction you want to heal something or you want to control destruction and healing like you want to move it back and forth to it's like and still, this is just the moment before everything crashes. So Bernhardt, you know, in the designing of this book, did you, was, was there anything unusual about the process or was it just another day in, in the, the busy <laughs> life of Bernhardt Vosteiner? Was there something unusual okay. about making yeah. this? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, first of all, I don't do this kind of books very often. And uh, I was I was very, very happy to, to be asked for such a project. It's normally uh, people invest their money in, in different projects. And this, this was something like, so uh, something which actually really earns uh, to be called graphic design. So, uh, this was indeed unusual, you know. Um, well, on the other hand, I just had to find technical solutions for, for a lot of things. Uh, that was, for example, those stills we were talking about. Um, so it, this was, was a sort of delicate process for me to, to make sure that those... Uh, images will come out as they were, they were provided to me like because it's so it's a different to see an image on on the screen to what you get on paper and i was to me it was really clear that you know although I, you know i i never saw the actual movie to that i just i just saw the the images and uh, and actually nobody really explained that to me that these were like uh, stills but this is obvious and uh, so they have this 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 color scheme. <coughs> so and you know it's not too bright, but it has like this yellow, goldish, brownish tone. <coughs> so and I, I I thought it was it you know we, we really have to make sure that those images come out as. Yeah, I, you would imagine them to come out. So this is this was this was sort of the challenge for me to 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 find out what was what was it all about 
with those images, for example, you know, to name one of the challenges here. And uh, unlike many projects, didn't you have the author show up peering over your shoulder to be right there and check on what you were doing? Yeah. Berlin, so, uh, it's kind of unusual. Well, actually not too much. Like back then when I was like still working in agencies, this happened from time to time. And like later when I had like sort of like normal clients, so I I often try to, to make that, you know, because like it's different if you like write emails back and forth and you, you talk about things, but sometimes like those tiny details, which are really important, you cannot really explain. I mean, like it's on one hand, because it's not my native language. On the other hand, it's like really sometimes, you know, you have to see, you know, like it's so the, the client may, may ask, so why, why would that be a problem? Like, can't you just, you know, make the, the thing smaller or wider or so? And, and then it's like, yeah, I can, but I don't, I don't assume you really want to do this. So, and then, well, and then you do like screenshots and, and this all takes time. But like when, like when Marie was sitting like right beside me, so I, I kind of felt that, that there was like a real creative process. Although actually I think we just did the, the final correction round or something. So, but still we were, we were discussing like uh, details like uh, line breaks or something or uh, a distance between lines so those those really yeah typographic details i would say uh, but uh what i found really important because these details are crucial i would say and what did you think marie of this process sitting next to the designer traveling to berlin putting I, I really i was I really uh, admire and I'm very grateful to Bernard that he could, he really could take me and uh, because it was like, I just would try to find a page to actually to describe why it, it's like we couldn't do it on email because it's like, uh, there were so many like details as he said that if we started to to write an, e an email, it was, it, we could have gone on forever. It's like, I think that, like this page, like if you can see it, maybe mm -hmm. like this, and you know where where to put like and mm -hmm. you see, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that only graphic designers really understand how important it is with a page, and and Bernard is that kind of graphic designer. So I was so so happy that we could share. And also to make these images uh, correspond to the text. It's like to make them some kind of like the same uh, mm. communicative space. It takes, it, you, you really have to, it's really so uh, like, it's, uh, you really need to do something very delicate in every, every sense and, and refined. And, Bernhard was, I was really, really grateful and impressed by his skills. So I was happy and also happy to be in Berlin and see. <laughs> yes. And, and so it was a time when you made these poetry films, Marie, and, and uh, are you still making them now? No, no, I stopped actually. And I cannot really, I still ask myself why, but I think, at that time, I also worked a lot with the photo, the photographic image. And right now, I feel that it has lost this uh, quality of truth for me, the photo photograph. And I think it has to do with the digitalization, with like the flooding of the images and with like new technology, like new uses of like social media. I don't, I don't, it doesn't interest me. I cannot like, and, but I, I really miss it. When I think about it, I really, really enjoy working like that. And it was not only to work with images, it was very important, but also to the combination of image and voice and sound was like, mm -hmm. like and that is like hard to like, uh, yeah, yeah. To, to find other places where you can do the same. 
Yeah, how do you get voice and sound onto the page, like in a book? Yeah. Can a book convey those things? Uh, I think, you know, every poet used to do this differently. Mm -hmm. many, poet, many people say to me that the difference between my poems on the page and how I read them, it's enormous. It's like two different like uh, mediums. And I like the silence of the poet poem on the page and I really like the voice, but I, I don't think I like make it visible on the page as some poets mm -hmm. do. You know, most poetry books don't have illustrations. They don't have so much imagery as this book. And, and in the Swedish, the books do not have this imagery. I wonder if you, if you feel what happens to the work when the imagery is included in the book. It's, it's very special to me that it's there and it means a lot. It really adds something and also to make a combination of these two books because they are not. They are two separate books in Sweden. And I think because there is, they, they are really related. And so it's, and the, and I don't, you know, in Sweden we have this, like we have had a very, very long discussion about the metaphor and like the imagery. And, and I'm like, I have worked a lot, like I have not used so many <laughs> metaphors in my poetry, but I add, I have added the, photo because that is something else so have it in the book it makes a lot means a lot to me Kelsey do you have anything to add at this point about how this book became this mixture of image and mixture of two books was it was it hard to to put the two books together because you, you, you were translating these poems separately you might not have thought that they were to be put together in this book, Damascus, to, to Damascus and the other one, Atlantis. Right, that's true. Um, yes, and I, I should say that when Marie and I met, it was in 2015 in the International Writing Program in Iowa City, and we were working on some of the poems together from To Damascus. Uh, and then in 2018 in Sweden together, we were working on Atlantis. So there was sort of some time in between the two. Um, but when we went to put them together, I, I think that happened, we changed our plan a few times, right, Ready? We had, we had a few versions of which, which poem should be part of this new book, but, but it, um, it also sort of built itself, I think. They came together uh, and, and there are some themes I think that are important um, in both, and so they handle them very differently formally. The texts we were, the poems we were just reading are, are these kind of blocks on the page with very short phrases, um, but, but it all appears in kind of one block. And then we will read in a moment a poem from Atlantis, which is um, much different in form. It's, it's short sentences or phrases each on their own line. So there's much more, much more space. Um, but the two forms, I think, are both exploring some of the same kinds of questions. Um, so that's, that's sort of a, what we were looking at is which poems could go together and talk to each other about some of the same kinds of themes. All right, well, I think we can continue with the second reading portion. Du vill inte vara i regnet en minut till, men ändra dig när du kommer in i rummet. Springer mot båten, hinner precis innan den lägger ut i mörkret. Reykjavik försvinner, regnet upphör, kylan tilltar. Men du märker det först senare när kylan gått in i kroppen. Är märkligt lycklig. Du lyssnar på kaptenen när han läser med sin isländska accent. Blush upon the cheek of night, posthumous unearthly light. Ni kretsar, står stilla, inget händer. Folk går ner under däck, somnar rakt över borden. Du går ut igen. The northern light, säger kaptenen och ställer sig bredvid dig. Pekar, can you see it? Ett vitt moln ser du bara, kanske. Jag är van, säger han, det är därför. Jag ser aktiviteten. 
Hur många timmars tidsskillnad tänker du? Hur timmarna räknas från en plats som fortfarande är ung i geologisk mening? Short minutes of joy are so rare now, skriver han. Russia is reaching hell in full rage. En fontanell, tänker du, där världen öppnar sig uppåt på klotet som roterar oavbrutet i sin gravitation. Ett en misstänkt mun, säger världen, om den ruttna hajen. Låt tungan smaka den och smaken stiga upp i pannhålorna. Svep brännvinet, drick hela glaset. I don't want to be in the rain a minute longer. But change your mind when you enter the room. Run toward the boat just before it casts off into the dark. Reykjavik disappears. The rain ceases. The cold intensifies. But you notice it only later when the cold has pervaded your body. Strangely happy. You listen to the captain as he reads in his Icelandic accent, blush upon the cheek of night, posthumous unearthly light. You circle, stop still, nothing happens. People go below deck, fall asleep at the table. You climb up again. The northern lights, the captain says, coming next to you, points. Can you see it? A white cloud, barely, maybe. I'm used to it, he says. That's why I see the activity. How many hours of time difference, you think? How hours are counted from a place that's still young, geologically speaking. Short minutes of joy are so rare now, he writes. Russia is reaching hell in full rage. A fontanelle, you think, where the world opens upward on the globe, rotating continuously in its gravity. Eat it with your mouth closed, the host says about the rotten shark. Let your tongue taste it and let the taste rise into your forehead. Chug the liquor down the whole glass. What's it like hearing those words now, today? What's going on in the world right now compared to when you were writing them, translating them, remembering them? Yeah. Uh, I'll start by saying quickly that I have always found Marie's poems to be somehow kind of prophetic, um, is the word that I would use, not necessarily predicting the future, but sort of in the, in the real meaning of prophecy, it's sort of speaking, speaking the truth. Um, and so I think, yeah, when you find these moments in here where there are comments on on Russia's actions in Syria, for example, um, it just it sort of continues to ring true. And um, there's other lines in the in some of the other poems that mention things about the history of the empires and sort of it feels like in a in a way that we're sort of cycling back through history. Um, and it it really is repeating in some ways, but I don't know what you would say. Right? Um, I, uh, I think I tried for a long time to like, to write in the present what I uh, see. And, um, and like I, my generation, I, I grew up not so long after the Second World War. Ended. And and I was like grown up when the, the uh, eighty nine when the wall fell down. So it, I, there's so much history in for me and 
European history and how it has influenced my life, I have been really thinking about a lot. And I think it's very, very difficult to write the, the present in the present tense. It's really difficult. And um, but I, I really tried. So it's not to be prophetic, but but also I also try to connect things in the world with each other, like at least not maybe not in the same poem, but in the same book, like to so that they are uh, possible to relate to each other. Is that connection like is it kind of fluid? Does it just happen, or sometimes is it hard? to connect these different things that you've collected? Um, I, I think I've focused a lot on details. Mm -hmm. and, and not, you know, trying to make you hold the, the uh, hold that that's what they connect too hard to make them open to like, to each other in a way that I cannot really uh, predict or control. But uh, no, no, I don't know. No, it's not easy to write poetry. No, it's not. <laughs> but is it easy to translate your poetry? Do you find that a lot is lost in translation or are some things found in translation? And your, your translation process, uh, the two of you, is a little bit unusual, right? So how, how would you describe this process? Kelsey. <laughs> Um, we, we have worked very closely on, on the translations of these poems. Um, I think the tip, typically I will prepare a, a sort of a first version. Um, I, and then I share that with Marty and we, we talk, we just talk a lot. Uh, it's, it's wonderful when we can be in person together, but we've also used a lot of, done a lot of Skype meetings. Um, and so, and then I ask a lot of questions like, can you, um, especially with some of these details that, that you're referring to, I ask a lot of questions about um, what, what I should be seeing here. What is, what is the image so that I can make sure that I can see it so that I can then choose, choose words in English. Um, and then the next phase is we, we do a lot of going through possible options for the translation. So uh, we'll, you know, I will list off a lot of synonyms or we'll look up different possibilities for how to say different things and then um, and try to choose based on sound, which is very important to Marty and which I think you can hear when she is reading the poems. So that's what guided some of our choices. Um, you know, sometimes, Sometimes we get sort of lucky. I was, I was thinking how it's sort of lucky. Um, the poems that we read at the beginning, when it says the gestures language, the guests gesture and guest has that play sound play together, um, and it it was similar in in the Swedish. Um, I don't have the Swedish in front of me. The questionas um, folk, yes. yes sir. Uh, yes, sir. So, so we sort of, um, in a sense, we were able to repeat that sound, and those words are probably related through their, you know, through their etymological histories. Sometimes um, we would choose a different sound. Uh, for example, foghorn fusions. That alliterate there isn't an alliteration there in Swedish, but it was a way we were able to create this repetitive sound in the English. So um, that's that's sort of the sort of the process. What would you add to that? Uh, I would add that I'm always amazed and about your English. I felt it almost immediately when we started to work together. And also, I yeah, that you had a feeling of the sound texture. Like it's it's I find it rare. Nope, not all, everyone has it, but you have it, and I I really and it's and it's also something with like English is such a rich language. It has so many many words, and Swedish is not like many, all our Nordic countries. We we use we make poetry of uh, small uh, 
differences and you can like use so many <laughs> words and you, we so we write very different poetry and okay. uh, but you you somehow understand and know how to use mm. it to make an english translation of this so you don't mind if your work becomes as you said very different poetry in translation uh i i actually um that is i find that exciting that it does mm -hmm. it is like the, like they are traveling in their on their own the poems and i think that i like that because mm -hmm. some people say the hardest thing to translate is poetry because it pulls those aspects out of a language unique to that language and once you start translating it you, you know you're you're taking that subtlety away and, and, and some people will say that you know some kind of poetry can be translated others can just do not work in translation do you think there's something about your work that makes it translatable um, if so what would that thing be that's good very good question i'm not sure right. an answer but i think it is uh, it's at least translatable into English. I'm not maybe not to uh, maybe not to Spanish as easily. <laughs> Why not? Uh, because uh, it's uh, it works with like uh, how you use uh, verbs. It is like and and who who's who is speaking and you have to say that in Spanish and that is very nice. Yeah. Um, so. And maybe anyway, good. I don't know, but uh, I don't. But I'm, you know, I am a translator myself, so I cannot say that I, I'm not like a purist and say you cannot translate poetry. I, I, right. I, practice, I do it, and yeah. I think that it's, uh, uh, of course, that poets. I would, I wouldn't translate myself, but I think that uh, uh, it's. Uh, it's a question of tone. If you have a tone of, of the poem, and then you you are free to do a lot. I think if you can keep it. Yeah, yeah. Do any of you have um, questions for each other about anything? I'm sitting here asking all the questions. <laughs> I I um I I would like to ask Samhard a question. The the poem that we read from just now. Um, actually has a very different color scheme. You were talking about the colors of many of these images, but uh, this one, as you as you heard, takes place um, in Iceland at the, it's called Badabunga, the volcano. And mm -hmm. the, the color scheme is much different. It's much more like black and white. Did that change how you thought about the design? Um. Well, or there's, here's another one with snow, images of snow. Yeah, I mean, like, th that's that's interesting that you bring up that one, because the other one you showed first, for me, was not an issue at all, because actually it is literally black and white. It's more like a graphic, uh, a graphic composition. So there wasn't, wasn't much to think about, because, like, technically, uh, this was easy to understand or to make sure that this is just black and this is white so but um and it 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 was obvious to me that it was meant like that from the beginning on but with this here this this was difficult i don't know if this is i mean you, you just showed that because yeah. it because it has so much gray tones in it and yeah so i wasn't sure if this was just by accident or it was like meant to be like this because, you know, for me, you know, I don't know, I don't know the, the paper. I have to 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 touch the paper in order to understand how much the paper is able to suck up the the, the ink. Um, so and and if I know this, I can just you know bring up the contrast more or less just you know in order to make it the way. Uh, the the client wants to have it, or you want to have it, like or the artist, so to say, in this in this case. And when I saw those those gray images, like the first idea was like I would I would bring up the contrasts more more in, intense, or 
but uh, on the other hand, I wasn't sure if, if this was actually meant to be like this. And I think like we, we later, when you, Marie, when you were there, we decided how to, how to have, or what, what, what the look has to be. Um, so the grayish ones was like sort of a thing that I was kind of relieved that I, I didn't have to decide on my own here. <laughs> uh, and because especially like this was one of those cases you actually almost cannot decide uh, uh, on, a, on a distance because like you, you send uh, just images back and forth and people will see it on the very same screen. They see everything anyway. Yeah. So and you, you just have to, to, to just, you know, take it off the screen. Just, you know, think, don't think of the screen yet. Think of paper. Think of paper as a sponge. It will just suck up the ink. You know, and how do you want to how do you want to have it here? And um, yeah, this this was sort of a thing we we had to discuss, and, and it was good that we that I could discuss it. Is is there any place where you 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 two really disagreed on the translation? Interesting. Hmm. Well, you did you did mention some of the English in the original, the English parts in the original Swedish. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we did have a lot of discussion about what, what to do with those in the translation. I don't know about disagreement, but I think sometimes there was a way in which I, I felt that some of that English could also be translated to another English, if that mm. makes sense. Um, and sometimes, I think mostly for me, it, it had to do with, with again, the the image or the ability to see, for the reader to see it. So I'm thinking of one example where um, there's, it says that there's an animation of a gun on a nail. And I ask, we talked about that and it's um, a fingernail. And I think, so that's why I put, I wanted the word fingernail in the English to mm. make the image clear because my mind at least kept going to a metal, you know, a nail. Mm -hmm. um, Things like things like that, we had a lot of discussion about. I think I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I can think of any other example. Well, as as I remember it, and I can actually remember wrong, I I felt that the, the last word was always yours. It's like I I did what I could to to limit, and then I you had to make this last choice because I couldn't I couldn't feel it, I, and I did caused you a lot of problems because I kept asking you, <laughs> so, this is right, is this, or could you use it? And it's, I know I was really difficult, but, I, but, but you, yeah, but the last word was yours, always. Yeah, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful process. I'm, I'm always just so grateful that I get to work with you and learn from, from your poems. Yeah, yeah, I'm also very grateful. Does anyone in the audience have a question which you can send in the chat or somehow you can ask us? I don't know the protocol exactly. So far, no questions from the audience. So, so far, nothing yet. But now nothing yet. So, mm -hmm. we like wait and I read the last and only one poem, Kelsey, and then see if there's any question after that. Sure. Att stå kvar i försöket, de vikande skikten, negativet, belysningen, längre, tyngre, mörkare, begravning i rött ljus. Att glömma namnet och bara minnas ordet. Atomplyning, avstötning, avsöndring, de befästa gränserna, upprustningen. Om nervgasen kommer i rebellernas händer, uttalandet, reaktionen. En sträng av smärta längs magskinnet. Handrörelserna när han berättar om hur de lastade en bil full av raketer som inte exploderat i nedslaget. Hur de med hjälp av fjärrstyrning körde bilen. Rakt in i regeringsarméns läger. Bilder av snö. En grill i snö med spett av snö. En samling snöfigurer för att sörja de döda. Den döde i snö. De sörjande i snö. Marken täckt. Medan flyktinglägen fylls av frysande människor. 
Tälten dignar under snön. Esperanza båten i hoppets helvete turbulens. Boken i floden i efterdyningarna 23 och 15. Oceanisk tid. Smärtans huvudstad. Sundet rörelserna. Nicht, natt, hars, ekoland. Transonerna, vågen. Vad är att ge och ta frågan och svara själv? Sömn. Och fortsätter att upprepa frågan genom natten. Vad är att ge och ta? Hör han den döende mannen genom sin sömn? Hans sista ord. Vad är att ge och ta? To keep standing in the attempt. The strata giving way. The negative. The lighting. Longer. Heavier. Darker. Burial in red light. To forget the name and remember only the word. Nuclear fission. Rejection. Secretion. Fortified borders. The rearmament. If the nerve gas falls into rebel hands, the announcement, the reaction, a cord of pain along the ab abdomen's skin, his hand movements when he describes how they loaded a car full of rockets that didn't explode on impact, how with the help of remote control, they drove the car right into the government army camp, images of snow, a grill in snow, with skewers of snow, a collection of snow figures to mourn the dead, the dead body in snow, the mourners in snow, the ground covered while the refugee camps fill with freezing people, the tents grown under the snow, Esperanza, the boat in the hell of hope, turbulence, the book in the river, in the aftermath, 2315, oceanic time, capital of pain, the straight, the movements, nicht, nacht, hush, echo land, the rations, the scales. What does it mean to give and take, he asks, and answers himself, sleep, and repeats the question throughout the night. What does it mean to give and take? He hears the dying man through his sleep, his last words. What does it mean to give and take? Thank you. Beautiful. There is one question that has come in. How does the white space in the layout of these poems translate? Does it always end up being the same from the Swedish layout to the English layout? Or does sometimes white space in Swedish need to be a different kind of white space in English? Very interesting question. Yeah. Really very interesting because that has of course to do with line breaks, you could say. How do you do the line breaks? And, mm -hmm. um, and, but I think also that, as I said about differences between English and Swedish, I think we use, we can write poems with like only three words in them in one page. <laughs> we, we are used a lot of whiteness on the page. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, at least um, American poetry like so much white as we can take. So the whiteness, uh, white page is uh, not so white. In this world, <laughs> you can say less whiteness. You yeah, I remember when I when I saw the original, I think of Atlantis. I said, "Oh, you know, I, I like yeah, I like this, but there's a lot of white space. Do we need that much white space?" And you said, "Well, not necessarily." <laughs> and then I realized we probably could could work together because <laughs> I've asked questions like that to people. That somebody they've said, "All the white space has to stay." And <laughs> No, but I, I, I like, and I really like the question. I really appreciate it because it is really true. The white space on the page, it's really, it speaks a lot to, the, to you as a reader. So, it's, so that's what's also why it was so important and so important work we did with Bernard and his, his skills of like also making white 
mm -hmm. how to to you to make it visible like Bernhard, I think one of your future albums you should use the title Foghorns Fusions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that again that is all kinds of music. Yeah. A very, very enigmatic rock title. Exactly, yeah, because Bernhard <laughs> is this enigmatic rock music, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, regarding this this white space, actually, you know. Uh, I, I've been pre provided with a sort of like a pre layout for all the pages. And uh, so this was another thing which was like to solve in the, uh, during the process of designing it. Because like the, the very first thing I got was this, this script with the, 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 the lines. You, you already showed that like some of the, uh, the, the poetry has like a very particular way of being set on the page. I don't mm -hmm. know if that is like visible here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, the thing is, you, you, I don't know, you just wrote it with like any random font you had on your computer, probably like Helvetica or something, I can't remember. So, and then like we tried a lot of things. So it again it went back and forth like we and then we 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 decided like for the the, the fonts we having here, and the thing is like the width of the font is 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 like different like each font has a certain way of like mm. how it adds up in the length, and this I had to translate but sometimes it, it just didn't really work out because it's like uh, so we 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 already we are kind of we're using like the the like we have a lot of white space space up and down but like here and here we almost have none so we we're just like we're actually forcing the the lines to go like very far into the the binding so uh, and that is that is because of the uh the the line breaks i had to keep and um so the yeah, so this 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 only looks like a lot of, of white space, but uh, so and some of some of the pages I really had to to found some solutions to make it work still, you know. Uh, so that it 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 just looks like it. It's the same with the with the images. So well, obviously there's like white space here and here. But that is just the reason for because it's like we have the screen uh, ratio here, and and you know there's no no way of you know make make a cut out of one of like of, of 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 a piece out of the image. It was obvious, or you know, it was clear that the, the whole image has to be on a page. So how to handle that? So and I think we we had a sort of discussion about this as well because. So my first idea was like, okay, so we have like, we have this ratio here and we have this ratio for the page. And the first idea was for me like to have it just in the middle so that the, the guiding line for each page was the middle line. And that was also for me the, the first solution because like so many pages, they have like a different amount of text. So this is like a, just, a lot of text, but and, and like in a block, and then we have like this is not that much text, but it has to be spread all over the page. And uh, well, sometimes we have like really common pages. Mm. Okay, um, we have, sorry to interrupt you. We have one one question has come in in our final minutes. Marie, what inspired you to write about Atlantis? And this comes from someone who's been on a expedition to Atlantis? Why did you decide to write about Atlantis? I, I don't think I write about Atlantis. It is a title of a book, which is uh, a, like a lot of journeys over, over the world. It, mm -hmm. And it's somehow, it, it is like, a, a, maybe it's, a, and I said, uh, ended the book saying, I don't know if it's like Atlantis sinking or rising. It, it's like it is something in the book that is like it's on doom and hope in a very like balance. Mm -hmm. but, so the myth of Atlantis was very uh, important, but uh, yeah, so 
Okay, I, I have one final question. I guess we don't have to be so strict with time. What does it mean desire is always the question? <laughs> that is Kelsey's like he often always repeat that this is always a question. Um, I like that it's a quote from somewhere. I don't know someone. Yeah. I like it because it is like it, it is a desire is always curiosity about the other. It's always like a direction towards someone. So it's like it's a question about who are you, what are you like, what what's yeah. So the, the, the movement of the question, I think, that is what I mean. Sorry, it's always a question. But it's like, yeah. It's somehow, it's a quest. What do you want to find out something about someone? It's another good title for many things. Iron <laughs> is always a question. Maybe I'll use that one for something. <laughs> So what busy. does it come from? Do you remember the, what the quote comes from? No, I have no idea. But you, it was this quote, it's a quote you found, not something that Kelsey found to translate for some, something else. No, it is in English, in yeah. Swedish. Yeah. Uh. No, I have no, I will think about it and if I remember, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm, it could be someone telling, saying that to me, I'm not sure. Does poetry have the problem that music has? People are constantly quoting things without remembering it, and somebody sues you and says that's my melody. And uh, I don't remember no. about that. Think, it doesn't I, come up so much. Or... I think it's maybe it's starting, but like I think poetry is generous. I think it's good to be quoted and stealing from each yeah, other. Yeah. What could you do? Mm -hmm. but we At least think... Bob Dylan would agree with that. <laughs> maybe. I contain multitudes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you have further plans to work together on future books? Uh, I hope so, so much. Yeah, nothing, no, no concrete plans yet, but I hope so too. Anyone else have any questions for for each other? Bernhard, do you have plans to design more poetry image books? Does does this uh, task intrigue you? Uh, yes, it is. It is super interesting and uh, well, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the position to have plans. So <laughs> I, I have to be asked, but that would be something I would really continue to do because this is really, uh, you know, brings together the technical aspect and art, you mm -hmm. know, great thing to do. Okay, any final words today? Thank you to Scandinavia House and to all of you. Thanks everyone. Thanks to the American Scandinavian Foundation for helping out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I just want to chime in and say thank you as well to all the, the participants and all the audience watching. Uh, thank you, David, for moderating. Thank you, Chelsea, for the translation. And Marie for the poetry and uh, Bernard for the graphic design. Um, we are doing more literary programs online, so we will have some more coming up in the in the future. Um, so just check the website scandinavia.org. Um, and we hope to see everyone very soon, either in person or in the virtual world as well. But uh, thank you again. Uh, and yes, uh, and I hope everyone has a nice day. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you somewhere in the world. <laughs>